Thank you. Again, welcome to the Maine Department of Education's orientation to the US CDC School Mental Health Action Guide. Today, we are focusing on strategy two, promote mindfulness. Next slide, please. Emily, if you can, thank you very much. Uh, I'm Susan Berry. I am the Health Education and Health Promotion Specialist at the Maine Department of Education and a member of the Office of School and Student Supports. And I am your host today as Ken Radiola is away on a, at a conference this week. Joining me are two of my colleagues from the Office of School and Student Supports, Emily Poland, who is going to be running the Zoom and technology for us. And I thank you so much as Tammy Diaz is traveling today as well. And I'd like to have our presenter for Promote Mindfulness, Kelly Bailey, introduce herself now. Kelly? Thank you, Susan. Hi, everyone. My name is Kelly Doyle Bailey, and I am the Social Emotional Learning Specialist for the Maine Department of Education. Um, I serve on the Office of School and Student Supports with Susan and Emily, and I see that my director is here. Thank you, Julie Smythe, for coming and um, being part of this, um, this offering today. So yeah, back to you. All right, thank you, Kelly. Next slide, please. It is the mission and vision of the Maine Department of Education to promote the best learning opportunities for all Maine students by providing information, guidance, and support to our schools, educators, and leaders, and by providing adequate and equitable school funding and resources. To quickly review the format for today's session and all of our sessions, we will Today, review the strategy two of Promote Mindfulness. Participants in small group discussions um, will be in breakout rooms after Kelly's presentation. We will then come back together and have a report out of our discussions and then wrap up with a quick summary and what's next in, in terms of what's next week. As a reminder, there is an understanding that schools are in different places regarding the implementation of this strategy and all strategies. We respect the position of every school and we are proud to provide this opportunity to learn and discuss ideas for growing your readiness to fully implement this uh, strategy. As we begin, if you have any questions, please drop them in the chat and we will respond to these questions at the end of the presentation or in the summary that is distributed following today's presentation, depending on the amount of time and the number of questions. We will be dropping a link in the chat for the promoting Mental Health and Well-Being in Schools, an action guide for school and district leaders. So in case you don't have that link, you will have that available. And I will do that in a moment. Next slide, please. We value the experience that each of you, your schools and your communities bring to this webinar. This is a safe space to come together, discuss and share experiences, ideas and knowledge. This is meant to be an interactive and engaging experience. So we do have a few norms to create a safe space for collaboration. We want to assume positive intent, share the air, and specifically within the breakouts, and contribute gems that can help the group learning and know that all learn and all teach. These safe space for collaboration norms apply to all of our sessions. Now I'd like to hand over the presentation to our specialist for Promote Mindfulness, Kelly Bailey. Next slide, please. Thank you, Susan. So I really appreciate this opportunity to um, connect with you all and, um, and to come into this space. Um, and also just to recognize that for those of you who felt um, psychologically safe or comfortable uh, popping into the chat, how you're doing today, um, and knowing that, you know, we have an opportunity to, to scroll and see it's not lost on me or my colleagues or probably to each of you that not everyone is coming to this space and place ready to fully uh, learn. I see folks who are tired and frustrated and overwhelmed and feeling it in lots of different places. And I think that uh, we would be remiss um, to just launch into sharing the strategy too. Um, even though we have lots that we would love to share with you, um, the way that our office and especially within the health and wellness field and, and nursing and, you know, just our office in general, we like to model um, the things that we are, you know, we're 
we're doing with youth in our schools. So because we know that the majority of you are, whoops, are feeling, um, I don't know why that pop-up just came up. Does anybody know why that's doing that? Do you see it? No? Oh, all right. My team's just all of a sudden popped up. Um, so technology, right? Um, so just like youth, we cannot just assume that because people are in this space and there are 52 people here now, and if you are just coming in, the prompt as folks were coming in was to consider how are you feeling right this moment? You know, everybody has had a long work day. Um, Y'all are coming in here voluntarily and willingly, but we have absolutely no idea how you're feeling. And the same is true for our youth. They get on the bus or they're dropped off or they walk to school and we don't know how their sleep was last night. We don't know how their breakfast was. We don't know how their clothes are feeling. We don't know how, uh, how, they're, how they're feeling in that moment, just like we don't know. The, with 100% certainty, the only person that I know um, how, I'm, how anyone's doing is myself. And the only reason that I know that is if I take a moment, a still small moment to be present with myself. And that really is when we talk about exploring mindfulness, we're talking about pausing, being still, giving ourselves permission to be unbusy, putting pens down, putting notebooks down, that's old school, right? Putting computers away, phones, and not multitasking. To be truly present means right here, right now, intentionally. So this is our invitation to you to just kind of sit back, anchor yourself by putting your feet on the floor. This is a, a mindful practice of grounding and centering. I saw one person say, I feel grounded and centered, but a lot of us are feeling less than, we're feeling frazzled, we're feeling overwhelmed. So before we can launch into the work and share what we'd like to share, we'd like to give you an invitation to be on busy. So if you don't mind, you know, you can keep your cameras on, you can turn them off, whatever is comfortable for you, but give yourself that permission to just be present, fully present in this moment, feeling your feet anchor yourself to the floor, allowing your body to feel fully supported by your chair. Maybe soften your eyes or close them if you feel comfortable. Drop your shoulders. Let your legs be long and heavy. Drop your arms beside your body. Your only invitation is to breathe in through your nose or out through your mouth or in through your nose, out through your nose, however it is that's comfortable for you. Allow a little bit of space between your top teeth and your bottom teeth. Let your tongue be loose inside of your mouth. Just breathe. Reminding yourself that in this moment, there's no place to go and there's nothing to do. No obligations. And you may notice in this moment that your mind is racing, busy. Maybe it's making a plan or having a memory or thinking a thought. And that is normal. Just notice what comes up and say, huh, I'm thinking, I'm planning, I'm remembering. Just hold space for yourself in this moment. Hold space for the 53 people who are in this room with compassion and curiosity and understanding and non-judgment. That is the true essence of mindfulness. Notice how your chest and your belly expand in unison and contract the same. Just breathing. Holding space. Being unbusy. And taking one big connected cleansing breath, restorative breath in through our nose. And a long out through your mouth. your eyes are closed, gently blink them awake, roll your wrists, wiggle your toes and recognize they've been here the whole time and gently engage your spine 
into a stretch if that's comfortable for you. And then ask yourself again, how am I feeling right this moment? And where does that feeling live in my body now? And recognize that for some of us, this mindful practice of grounding and mindful breathing will feel very restorative, will feel very uh, regulating and integrating. And the same is true for our youth. Some of our youth will think that that mindful practice is awesome. But some of us in this room, in the 53 people that are here, might have had a really big notice of, I can't wait for this to be over. I am really uh, fidgety right now. It is hard for me to sit still. I can't wait for her to be done. My mind is racing. I just came here to learn about mindfulness. All of that is okay too. But know that that practice for you was probably not going to help you be integrated and regulated. Because if any of those types of feelings of annoyance or agitation or restlessness came about, then it's not organizing, right? And the same is true for our youth. And then for some of you, maybe that practice of mindful breathing and centering and feeling your body be heavy and long was just, okay, I could tolerate it. So if you don't mind just drop, uh, dropping in the chat, I liked it, I tolerated it, it was, it was okay, or I, I was ready for it to be over. And this is really our self-knowing. Mindfulness and emotional intelligence are very heavily uh, connected. And the key foundation for mindfulness is self-awareness. But many of us, many of us aren't giving ourselves still small moments, or we call them micro doses, throughout our day to stop, pause, breathe, and restore. And the same is true for our youth, especially when we're having them go quickly from one activity to the next, right? Without um, maybe an understanding that it takes time for, to shift out of PE back into the class or from the resource, you know, out um, from recess back to the class, or just if middle school and high school from one major content area to the next giving ourselves a still small moment to check in. How am I doing? How am I feeling? And where does that live? Susan, I really can't see the chat, so I don't know what's coming in. And um, Emily, if you don't mind advancing the next slide. We had lots of, I loved it, thumbs up. Um, I enjoyed taking a break, didn't realize, um, I was surprised how much I was not regulated, very centering and reminded of the power to have, we have on ourselves. So yeah. lots of positive. Lots of awesome. Fun. Thank you so much. And for those of you who maybe felt like, you know, that really wasn't that relaxing, know that that is okay. And that's information for yourself. You might need to do something like take a walk. There are so many practices in mindfulness. And I know that in this, um, this uh, manual, this guidebook, you have a lot, many, many, many opportunities to explore it. So I just wanted to start with just giving one of the uh, most familiar practices in mindful uh, mindfulness um, stress reduction is really uh, that mindful breathing. It's actually the first centering practice that we learn when you uh, go away to be a mindful to mindfulness practitioner. You learn to be to do mindful breathing. And, and Kelly, I yeah. like one of the comments. Good reminder to be self aware and grounding myself. Yeah. So mindfulness and mindful breathing is the reason that, that the breathing uh, is the first is the first offering or the first practice that we learn is because, right, breath was our first life gift. We came out of the womb and we took a big breath and we cried and the suck, swallow, breathe reflex is the first centering organizing reflex that human beings have. And it helps to integrate the left hemisphere and the right hemisphere of our brain into an, an integrated space and place so that we can be organized for higher level development. So what's really important to recognize in your youth, whether you are teaching pre-K or whether you're teaching high school students, is notice them. Notice how they move through time and space. Notice if they're coming in with, that, with the hood pulled over their, their eyes. Notice if they're, you know, posturing. All behavior is going to tell us something. And usually, typically, behavior that is challenging, either high-level challenge or low-level challenge, is telling us, I'm not okay right now. 
And just taking a pause and having a beat before you go right into something new, microdosing a little mindful breathing or some quiet music, or actually going outside and doing an awe walk or a mindful safari. All of these things, when we microdose these things throughout our day, it's not just good for kids, it's really good for us too, right? Because they, children, regardless of their age, they're going to pick up on our regulation or our dysregulation. So if we can, I just put this picture up here for us. I'm assuming that everyone probably uh, drives to work. Um, many, Some of us um, are, are remote workers, but driving to work is one of the most um, mindless things that most of us do because we have this in, it's in our muscle memory. We can jump in, put the key in the ignition. We can back out of our garages. We can drive the same road. We can go all the way to work, drive in. We probably park in the same exact parking space. And it's very mindless, right? Maybe we do a lot of things, but maybe we get on the phone. Maybe we listen to the radio. Maybe we're doing a meeting on the way in. I remember when I was a speech pathologist in schools and I would get in my car and sometimes I would have my coffee and my breakfast on the seat and I would try to eat it and do an IEP all the way to my school. I would get in. I wouldn't even remember leaving my house because I'm already at my work. And so we do a lot of this thing. The reason that I'm saying this is because we spend a lot of our days in a place of automaticity, right? In a place of mindlessness, in the kind of unknowingness of, and so I call it the human doing rather than a human being. And what this guidebook is really helping us do is helping us to, to remember that we teach human beings, right? And that just like us, kids are going from one space to the next and they need reminders. They need to re re reminders to pause, to integrate, to regulate, to use both sides of their bodies, and the only way we can get them to use this prefrontal cortex in an integrated, optimal way is if we give them opportunities to breathe and center. So this picture is up here for a couple of different reasons, but one is to remind you, if you have a drive home tonight, actually mindfully, in, which is another word for intentionally, notice you putting your key in the, in the ignition. Notice the sound of the car. Notice when you put it into drive. Notice the things that you see, the stoplights. Notice how when you pay real attention with intention and purpose, you're cultivating that present moment awareness. So next slide, please. So again, the mindfulness uh, is about being right here, right now on purpose, right? Not in your head thinking about the things that you need to do or the things that happened before but really being present with curiosity and interest in it is the first element of emotional intelligence and it is the self-awareness space. Without being self-aware that I am feeling agitated or I am feeling joyful or I'm feeling emotional, if, I, if I'm not aware of how I'm feeling, then I will not have um, the ability to regulate myself in any purposeful and good and positive way. So this slide here is just to kind of show you that in order to be mindful, we need to kind of take that pause. But it doesn't mean you have to go outside and wait for the sun to set and be, you know, to you can build this in anytime, any place. So you can teach these practices to your students and help them know that when they're standing in line, we can take a breath, right? That's a mindful practice. We, um, we do a lot of uh, cognitive and cerebral and language with students, but we really need to teach them how to listen on purpose, how to see on purpose, how to move on purpose, right? How to smell on purpose. And when we teach those skills, then we elevate their ability to be more self-aware and to self-regulate. Next slide, please. Susan, I'm not sure how we're doing for time. We need to move into breakout rooms as in, in okay. a minute. Okay. So this work begins with us, begins with me, an invitation to pause and breathe, which we just did. As you can see on that first section, mindfulness is about the right here and right now, right? With intention. It's about leaning into a being a human being rather than a human doing with curiosity and interest and non-judgment. How many of us, when we were doing that mindful moment, started going, oh, 
this is really tricky now. Uh, and, and you're judging the judging, right? Or you're judging the thinking. I know that when I was first learning about being centered and balanced and, and leaning into uh, the space of quiet and pause, that I would, I would hear myself saying to myself, this is really hard. I'm not really able to do it. I'm, I'm thinking about this, that, or the other thing, or I'm thinking about my grocery, grocery list and recognizing that oftentimes human beings fall into judging ourselves harshly, right? And if we can just be curious about that, huh, I'm, I'm thinking, oh, here I am. Yep. I'm making that list and just recognize that we can anchor ourselves in one really easy way to anchor yourself is to feel your toes inside your shoes. Actually push your feet into the floor, maybe even like push your palms together. So those are all things that you can do with your kids. You can teach those practices to your kids. Okay, next slide. So we just want to mention that in this guidebook, you know, um, there is a, a section that really talks about and helps us understand promoting mindfulness uh, through a lens of equity. And mindfulness is for everyone. It doesn't matter who you are, where you came from, what your name is, uh, where you're going. Everyone has a prefrontal cortex and everyone has an amygdala. And we all have a central nervous system. And our central nervous system is always picking up all of the information from our senses, what we hear, what we see, what we what we smell, what we taste, what we touch, you know, the things we touch. And so recognizing the one thing that I do want to say is that, thank you so much, Lisa, I see that you have to go, but you're very, very welcome. Um, one of the things that is very important is sometimes as educators, we can get caught in this cycle of, well, I really loved that mindful breathing practice and it worked really well for me. And we might bring that practice and teach it to our kids. And for some of the kids, it was very regulating, but for some of them, it was dysregulating. And so what we want to do is notice that with intention and not judge our kids for how come that didn't that didn't work for them. Because just like us, we all take in as, as adults, we're all taking in information at, at different frequencies and at different uh, abilities, right? Based on if I am feeling uh, integrated and regulated that day or whether I'm not, whether I'm stressed. So Susan is saying that we are getting ready to go into breakout rooms. So as we go in there, just remember that prioritizing our self-care, our self-compassion helps us self-regulate and, and the same is true for our students. Okay, Susan, heading over to breakout rooms. You have a couple more slides. I just want you to know that they were ready. Okay, I was confused. All right, so next slide. Thank you. All right, so the next part of the guidebook, the guide does a really great job of um, putting out some uh, tips for implementation. So when we think about supporting implementation and mindful strategies, what you can do as a teacher or a leader is to really focus on training your staff in the importance of mindfulness, but not just training it, living it yourself, right? Because it's very different for us to say, hey, I went to this, this conference or I went to this thing and I really love it. And here, here's a guidebook and, and, and it would be great if we all did it. The thing that we need to really recognize is this: this is our work. This is the cultivation of mindfulness is our ability, our ability to say, I want to lean into this with curiosity and interest and I want to do the practices myself. So when, and it's also always an invitation, right? It's always an invitation. It's not a have to, it's a want to, it's a curiosity. And just like giving people the space to, to, to practice it and not to also get hung up on the word mindful because you know what? Mindfulness again is about being right here with intention, with curiosity, with compassion. So um, building this in, uh, introducing it to your staff, practicing it at that admin level and then in your staff level and then bringing it in with your students because mindfulness is not something we do to people. It is something we do for ourselves for the betterment of everyone. Next slide. There's some resources in your guidebook. Uh, Mind Up Curriculum is one of, that is from the Goldie Hawn Institute. And um, that's listed in your guidebook. There are a few others, but I just wanted to put up here, Mindful Schools is a really uh, wonderful um, organization that often ha it has, a, it's a teacher training program for anybody who wants, I've actually, I'm actually trained in Mindful Schools. And you can uh, receive your mindfulness uh, certification through there for Mindful Schools. 
Breathe for Change is another one that offers a, um, educators a lot of, um, oh, you're a Breathe for Change graduate. That's awesome. I would love to talk to you, Ann, about that. So um, that's another great um, organization. And um, there's some others that are listed, but we just wanted to put some up there so that you could um, see what, what I love about all of these is they are very uh, brain-based and come from a neuro uh, uh, developmental place. Um, and I love that because it aligns with how uh, I believe and how I'm trained. So yeah, next slide. Okay, so we are going to get ready to go into some breakout rooms. And um, what we would love to invite you to do in your breakout rooms, if you feel safe and comfortable, is to kind of talk about how your schools, your districts, or whether, you know, even in your in your classrooms, if um, you have some of these practices that are being um, implemented in everyday academics or in your school climate. Um, maybe share where and when it's offered in the day and maybe who delivers it. Um, also, we're asking you to, or inviting you to consider um, how you might, if you do have mindful um, practices in your schools, how do you um, bring those forward and microdose them into your into your everyday academics? And, and how do you allow or provide space and time for your students to independently practice mindful moments? Um, and how do you build those into small group uh, mindful activities? And then lastly, a consideration is, what evidence do you see uh, classrooms and school environments that practicing mindfulness is beneficial? We know uh, that some schools uh, across Maine and across the country um, have faced some challenges um, with mindfulness. Even the word mindful kicks up some um, things that make it tricky for uh, folks to be able to build it into your uh, school school day. But we also know that mindfulness is well researched by mind, brain, and social sciences and relational sciences and evidenced in helping folks to reduce stress, to, um, to help with um, regulation of, of your, your body and your heart and your mind to help with depression, to help with um, connection, feeling more connectedness and, and to elevate uh, pro-social positive relationships. So those prompts will be available, right, Susan, in 